In today's journey, we take a look at the Pi Sugar 2 Pro. This battery backup solution is great for keeping data logging going when the power cuts out. Sure, it's not going to control your fridge, but it will let you know how far your beer has gone off temperature during the power outage. And was by far the most elegant solution we've seen so far. Our favorite part about this is that it attaches to the back of the Raspberry Pi, so that we can have any heat sinks or other controllers on top. The battery mounts in such a way to maximize space for surface mount components. And by far one of our favorite parts are these pogo pins. These spring-loaded pins make mounting to any Raspberry Pi a breeze. It's so easy, in fact, that Phil hasn't screwed it up once. It's the kind of simple stupid that you always feel like you're missing something because it's so straightforward. But other than the Pi Sugar 2, there's really nothing else in the box besides the screws to attach it. It comes with four, you only really need two. Although for a proper installation, of course, use all four. There is a handy card in here to contact, so if you have any problems, you know who to get a hold of. But these instructions are important to read, as there is a weird thing you need to do in a certain order to get this to turn on right. And other than that, it's designed very well. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get this mounted to a Raspberry Pi first. And to do that, first we need to break out these little sticker tab things. Don't peel them off as it's actually thread lock tape and it's going to help your screws from getting loose later. Just poke a hole in it so that putting the screw in is going to go a lot easier. We're not saying Phil didn't get a screw in without poking a hole in it first. It just was a lot harder than it probably should have been. Whatever, we're prepared to move forward now that all four of the holes have been poked. But before you get too far ahead of yourselves, just remember that unless you're doing something that requires the full-fledged power of a Raspberry Pi 4, you're probably leaving some battery potential on the table. In fact, we got an extra hour just by switching down to the 3B+. However, we could do better than that. By switching down to the 3B, we can get up to 8 hours. However, the fermentation tracking software that we use no longer supports the Raspberry Pi Zero, but it probably would have been close to 12 hours. We were able to get it to mount to the battery pack and it worked fine, but it not supported and we don't know how recommended it really is, as you're only able to use two of the four screws. Would have been perfect, especially with how they're redesigning the Zero coming up next year. But I digress, let's see how long it takes Phil to set this up from start to finish. The only real bit of work here is making sure that the right pins are lined up perfectly. When the screw holes are lined up, they should be right every time, but you should also always check. The next step is to use the supplied screws to attach the boards together. If you are having troubles, make sure that the screw is not cross-threaded and that you took the time to put a hole into the thread lock tape. Otherwise, just make sure that the screws are snugly tightened down all the way and everything should be good to go. Just remember that if you're going to plug in the Raspberry Pi that you want to plug it in using the ports on the charging board of the battery pack. Powering the Raspberry Pi directly will get it to turn on, but it will not charge the battery while in use. Or at all. So just remember to use the ports on the charging board and you will charge the battery and power the Raspberry Pi at the same time. Well, apparently he's just going to do the two screws, but it was still less than 60 seconds, and it's good enough to amount to Raspberry Pi Zero, so what the hell. But now that all the setup's done, let's turn it on. And this is where we said things get a little weird, and that's just because there's a certain order you need to do it in. Now that the board's mounted, turn the switch on, and then press the activate button. After that, the lights on the front should start flashing. One to say that it's getting a steady supply of power, and the other as an indicator that it's thinking. And that's all we needed to do to make our fermentation chambers data logger to be battery backup ready. However, we are glossing over a lot of functionality that this board does have, such as solder pads for QI charging, micro USB charging port for redundancy, and a programmable button that we will not be taking the time to learn how to use. However, it does have a real-time clock that we might take advantage of at some point. But we can see a design flaw here. There are solder pads for some things, but not stuff like the activate button or the programmable button. We can deal with it, but it could be a deal breaker for people who want to deploy this deep inside of a control panel. But it definitely makes up for this with raw power. For example, we were powering not just the Raspberry Pi, but our Arduino clone and a relay. 
Neither uses a lot of power, but drain is drain. And we wanted to test the worst case scenario, so at least one of the relays will be triggered the whole time. And we did this by testing it in the field by using Fermentrack to do a mock fermentation schedule. Then we did several runs using three different Pi models. But here we will be focusing on the Pi 3 basic model using a light install, meaning there is no GUI interface. This is mostly because Phil accidentally deleted a lot of the older charts. But here you can see that the fermentation started fine around 1500 hours and it went on doing its normal data check for its temperature probes until it hits 2300. You can see this large gap and that is because it's no longer collecting data because the Raspberry Pi shut off. The worst time we came up with was a Raspberry Pi 4 using a GUI operating system at only 4 hours. And since the more powerful CPU doesn't bring a benefit, that's 4 hours lost of data logging that is just gone. And that's 4 hours of data logging at the most crucial time. So if you've already taken the time and effort to build a Raspberry Pi fermentation controller for your fermentation chamber, you really should be putting in a battery backup to secure that investment. Also a battery backup will help limit the number of times an improper shutdown happens due to power fluctuation. Ever have your fermentation software just stop working properly one day? Improper shutdowns is probably the most common way that installs get corrupted. Now we'll do a more in-depth review on this product once we get a few more fermentations under our belt, but we just wanted to promote the idea of battery backup for your fermentation software because it can solve a lot of long-term headache. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and check out some of these other videos that we made in the past.